Nobody will admit it anyway. <laughs> okay. If you would, you have your paper in your hand. Um, I not only have some scriptures, but I got a couple of illustrations I wanted to use in a little bit. But I've entitled our message this morning, A Divided World. And I've got a couple of things on paper that you'll see how divided we actually are worldwide. You might want to hang on to the story, uh, and I'll tell you in the beginning because uh, it's something to ponder. But in Luke chapter 23, let's read that first verse on your page. Luke chapter 23, verse 33. And when they were to come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him. The malefactors are the thieves, one on the right hand and the other on the left. And our text is a record of the most important scene of all time when the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ stood there it fulfilled God's promise that he was going to give his only begotten to die in our place in a few days we're going to be celebrating the resurrection of the crucifixion but the fact that our Lord died for us is what we need to consider today. Some years ago, I observed some guys talking about uh, aliens and what have you coming to the earth, talking about outer space, flying saucers. I remember one called a lizard man that was even discussed. And Bigfoot, all those things that man's invented. And I thought about this. I heard somebody say this, actually. All those fellows, uh, aliens and whatever, that if they come to this earth and if they read a, hear a five-minute newscast, they'd say, let's get out of here. This is a divided world. Sad to say, tragically to say, the people are divided among each other in politics. I've never seen it so divided as it is today. It is divided, isn't it? If you would look down at your second scripture there where Jesus said, He that is not with me is against me. And he that gathereth not with me scattereth abroad. So you either you're gathering or you're scattering. Is that what you understand that to say? And apparently there's some that are against the Lord. Jesus said, if you're not for me, you're against me. How many people have you met along life's pathway? They say, oh, I'm not really against the Lord, but I'm not for him. Well, let's go back to what the Lord said. You for me or are you against me? It's not a middle ground there, is it? Not an imaginary one even. But it get, began back under the division did in heaven. When Lucifer lifted himself up and proclaimed that he was God, there's been a division ever since. With God, it's right, it's light, and it's truth. With Satan, just the opposite. It's wrong, full of darkness and lies. John 8, 44, the scripture says he's a father of liars, Satan. 
And he's pretty good at it. But this world is divided into two camps. And these two camps are against each other. God and Satan. And let's look at Satan's camp for a moment. Satan's camp is made up of those that have not trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. And as we look at the large number today, matter of fact, I read the other day where only 6% of the people in Europe attended church. 6%. 94% that does not. And in numbers, if you go by numbers, Satan seems to be winning the battle, doesn't he? He's having his day because his days are numbered. But I had a couple of illustrations. If you would turn to the back of your page, I want you to look at this a moment. This is what's going on in our news. You might want to keep this. The news out of Nigeria, and I'm reading verbatim, is getting progressively worse as it is being reported that more than 300 people were killed in at least seven predominantly Christian villages across Nigeria in February and March this year. According to the multiple sources that monitor the persecution of Christians, since February the 10th there have been at least 270 people killed in Kaduna State alone. International Christian Concerns confirms it's been reported that at least 70 Christians have been killed during a 10-week span at the beginning of 2019 across the other Middle Belt states. One early morning attack on the village of Karmal on February the 14th, sources said 41 people died after 300 gunmen swarmed the village shouting Allah Akbarbi as they fired their weapons and ransack people's homes, according to Barnabas Fun. It was reported almost all of those killed were women and children, along with a few senior residents who were unable to run away. Witnesses reported most of the men of the village fled when the attack began. Now, I want you to notice this next article entitled Divine Intervention. It's black and white. It's not my words. Four leaders of the Christians were told to renounce their faith in Jesus and revert to their old Islam. When the men refused, they were executed in front of their families. Then the wives of the four men were told to renounce the faith, their faith or their children would be executed. That's when something remarkable happened. Now you think about this, you tell a mother that just lost her husband, we're going to kill your children if you don't revert back to the Muslim faith. All right, continue reading. The children in the group said the Lord Jesus appeared to them that night and told them that all would be well. According to sources with the Barnabas Fund, they were told not to fear that he would protect them and that they should not renounce him, but stay strong, knowing that he is the way, the truth, and the life. The next morning, the terrorists lined the children against the wall and told the four mothers that they could save their kids if they would only renounce Jesus Christ and return to Islam. Mothers, what about that? The mothers refused. As the soldiers prepared to fire, something happened. They dropped their rifles and started to grab at their heads, screaming and shouting, Snakes! Snakes! Some of the soldiers ran off, and others dropped dead where they stood, according to Barnabas Fun. After one soldier had dropped his weapon in fear, one captive attempted to pick up the rifle in order to fire at the fleeing terrorists. He stopped when a four-year-old child told him about angels who were protecting them. You don't need to do that. Can you not see the men in white fighting for us? 
The lives of all 72 Christians were spared, and they were relocated to a safer region of Nigeria. When the Barnabas Fund contact asked the group's pastor why he thought Jesus appeared to them and not to others, and he gave this answer. He does not need to. You have over 200 versions of Scripture and many people able to explain the Bible to you. And these people do not. So, I didn't see it happen. These folk testified that it did happen and they were saved. It's good enough for me. I know this much. That the Lord's hand is not shortened, that he can't save. God is able to protect us if he said he would protect us, and he did in this case. By sending apparently a band of angels to deliver these women and these children from certain death. The Lord told us as time approaches that we all would be delivered up or persecuted for his name's sake. We live in a divided world. Now, this is overseas in Nigeria, but if you will turn back the, your page, the bottom of the page there where it says New SA. This came out of the St. Augustine newspaper. New St. Augustine Social Services building to, to house child protective agencies. I want you to read that article, what it says. Just Sammy Johnson discussed last meeting proclamation to dedicate April as child abuse and Neglect Prevention Month, Texas Department of Family and Protective Services distributed a news release stating, and get this, Child Protective Services investigated more than 168,164 allegations of child abuse or neglect in Texas last year, which would have been 2015. It was published in 2016. 151 children died at the hands of parents or other caregivers. 66,572 children were victims of abuse or neglect. And more than 17,378 had to be removed from their homes for their own protection. That's in one year, just in the state of Texas alone. 17,000 over that. Folk, I'd say that we live in a divided, sinful, condemned world. Satan has his followers in a state of hypnotism. Most people seem that their life, they understand their life is empty without God but out of their control. Satan's followers seem to be having a ball, temporarily headed nowhere. But let's look at God's camp a moment. God's camp is made up of sinners that have been saved by the grace of God. They haven't been made perfect but they've been saved. They've been cleansed from their sin by the blood of the Son of God. It's made up of those who have trusted Christ. The happiest people on earth. The people that have something to live for. Because you know, this life doesn't end at all. It just begins, doesn't it? The scripture says, He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son hath not life. So you've either trusted Christ or you haven't. We are as citizens in a strange country. That's what the scripture says. We're pilgrims in search of a city as the city that Abraham looked for. He looked for a city whose builder and ruler was God and is God. And folk, we search for that same city. But if you would, on your uh, page, look it down at 
First John chapter five, verse ten. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life. And this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. And finally, these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. You don't have to guess, do you? If we believed on him, then we know we have life. Likewise, if you haven't believed, then you need to get busy and let him be your Lord and Savior. But God's camp consists of a caring people. People that care for the souls of other men. And folk, we need to care. We need to have a burning desire for souls. The question is, how much do we care? And we prove that by our actions, don't we? We are a waiting people. Those that have claimed our Lord as our Savior. We patiently wait for our Savior. We wait for the completion of our redemption. Okay, even the body will be resurrected, won't it? I don't know how the Lord is going to do it, but he's going to do it. He said that. But you know, what really burns in my heart and, and the thought, what do the people that don't have Christ, what are, what are they waiting on? They have absolutely no hope. And on a brighter note, I saw where there was a while back, some fellows went down to visit at the funeral home one of their friends had died who was an atheist. And he had a picture. The guy looked at him, looked over the fellow that had died, and he said, they said, all dressed up and no place to go. <laughs> Think about it, folks. We joke about that. But the real destination is what bothers me. They're going to be in an eternity without hope, without God. Can you think about that a moment? I saw a guy this week preaching, and he was trying to illustrate about the gravity of life and how brief life was compared to eternity. And he had a, about this far of a red rope, a, a rope that was wrapped with red. And then he had this other rope, the rest of it went into yonder room and on over the hills of eternity. And he would liken in that little small red part to the time of life that we are here. But the rest of it runs on and on and on. But what you do here is eternal. You can't undo it. Think about that a moment. What you do here is eternal. You don't get a second shot at it, do you? Well, my friend, we live in a divided world where most of the world is headed the wrong direction. The cross, the place of Calvary, 
is what divides men. We just read where the Lord was crucified and we had one male factor on one side and one on the other side. One of them said, I've lived this life alone, I'll die alone. But then Ricky and I were out the other day knocking on doors. And this fellow from Korea came to the door. I believe Brother Harold was with us also. Guy from Korea came to the door and Brother and Ricky asked him, said, Sir, if you were to die tonight, are you assured that you'd go to the place called heaven? And his remark was, I don't care where I go. I don't care where I go. But folk, I got to tell you, God cares. He's paved the way and made the way when he allowed his son to be driven to the cross and cried out, Father, forgive them. They know not what to do. And folk, that story it's not just a story, it's an account of what actually happened. But one of the thieves said, I'll die alone. And the other thief said, I've lived this life wrong. Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. Jesus said, today shalt thou be with me in paradise. In the presence of God. Folk, when it comes to Christ, you can't remain neutral. It's impossible. So I challenge you today, as I make my closing remarks, that you'd give your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. Make your life count for Him. If you don't, folk, you're just flushing it down the commode. Because that's what it amounts to.